Well, hello, everyone. It is time for our midweek minutes. Actually, that was a few days ago. It is Friday, and thus I am wearing one of my various collegiate uh, attire. I uh, hope you're getting ready for a nice weekend, uh, despite all that is going on. I did want to touch base with you, and I've reached out to a number of you, those who are uh, church members, uh, full church members. Uh, I know there are a lot of you listening now that, that are not and join us on Sundays, but uh, if you're a full member of Fairfax Baptist Church, earlier this week you received an email from me that requested uh, some input. Uh, you have until Sunday night at 5 o'clock uh, to respond if you've yet to do so. Thank you. We just uh, needed to touch base with you. Uh, it was sent out on behalf of our board of directors. Uh, thank you for those of you, most actually, who have already responded, and we appreciate your uh, quick turnaround on that. If you've yet to do so, please do so by uh, five o'clock on Sunday. I want to just touch base for a few moments. There's not a lot of information. Uh, some things are changing. Uh, remember that our office, we began our limited new opening hours this week. Uh, they are from uh, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, if you need to touch base with us, drop by. You certainly can do that and find us uh, there during the week, those limited hours. We may be dropping by at other times, but uh, certainly that's when we would say the office is open. Uh, as always, uh, from here on out, just as a security measure, we're keeping the uh, office entrance area door locked, so be sure to uh, buzz, uh, and you can actually communicate to us that way uh, into the office, and we'll we'll click and let you in, or come around and let you in. It's just a security measure that we considered in a time of transition, as as Laura was telling us farewell. Uh, just some ideas uh, that we thought would increase security, and even in the COVID days and other things, that uh, seems to be a wise and, and prudent choice. I also want to remind you that uh, as long as we are under uh, the request from the governor, you really have to wear a mask. When you come in, we've had some people drop by this week. Thank you for doing so. And we mask up uh, when you come in to visit with us as well. Even if that, uh, that order becomes simply a suggestion in the future, uh, for many of you, uh, that might very well be something you want to uh, keep doing for a time. I do want to let you know, uh, again, to our church membership primarily, uh, you will be receiving the middle part of next week uh, in the mail a printout of our proposed 2021 uh, fiscal year budget. Uh, it will be a printout. There will be a cover letter with some explanation. Uh, this is to provide pretty much the resource like we typically do a few weeks prior to our budget decision for the year, which is your decision as church members, uh, we provide that proposed budget from our finance committee. It is presented to our board as really information and just their input or encouragement, uh, perhaps, but uh, typically just as by way of report. So they've seen it. We're going to give you a chance to see it for about two weeks, actually a little longer now, uh, before we actually have to make that decision. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about how you can participate in the decision and how we're going to uh, re give you a chance to respond and ask questions. Some of that information will be uh, in the letter uh, that comes with that. So be looking for it. We hope to get it ac actually in the mail next Monday, uh, but it may be towards the end of the day. So if you're local, uh, certainly uh, maybe even Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe Thursday at the latest if you live a little bit further out. Uh, and then we'll have a couple of weeks plus uh, for you to reach out to us and ask questions. Again, uh, there'll be uh, contact information of how you can do that and participate that way in the discussion uh, that we'll be having uh, that'll be presented to you digitally and you'll get a chance to digitally uh, affirm that budget or to make any comments that you wish. The same thing is true uh, decision-wise for our leadership roster that is being compiled. Uh, and that'll be provided, that'll come via email uh, several days before uh, that final weekend of the month. So towards the end of the month, uh, on into the third week or so of June, we're sending the budget as a hard copy because digitally, uh, number one, it's four or five pages long, uh, and it's a spreadsheet, and, and for many, it's just easier just to, to get it in that form. 
rather than open it up and, and try to print it out or reformat it in a way that's easier for you to read. So uh, it, it's coming in the snail mail, it might get there a little bit uh, slower, uh, but if you uh, would like a digital version of that, we certainly can forward that to you as well, but it's coming in the mail next week. Uh, I do want to just remind you too that this coming Sunday, again, is streaming only. Uh, people have said, hey, now that we're into phase one, are we going to open up real soon? And the answer to that is, depends on how relative soon is. Uh, it is sooner than it's been, uh, and that day is quickly, quickly approaching. Our rule of thumb, my rule of thumb, and it is, and, and it's flexible, uh, has been, you know, by the second week of phase two, uh, we know that Virginia, uh, the rest of the folks in the Commonwealth, except for those of us in Northern Virginia and Richmond, uh, we are going into phase two, but here in Fairfax, here for our church and for the Northern Virginia community, we still remain in phase one. Uh, we certainly will do so probably another week, if not uh, even another two, which seems to be the, the pace of each of the phases. Um, without putting a date on it, uh, I would certainly say that sometime in July looks to be the time we would be back. And we are in the process of, of working through all that we need to do to make sure that it's both a joyful return and a safe and healthy return. Uh, I've told you all, the, all along that it's going to look a little bit different. The service is going to be structured a little bit different. The sanctuary, the seating, and the arrangements, so the things we'll be able to do and things we won't be able to do. All of that's going to be explained to you, and we'll give you a walkthrough video as well as some printed information uh, as that day becomes ever closer. Uh, we'll be returning even before then uh, back to a live stream Sunday morning. Again, always our uh, services will be able to be saved on Facebook. If you want to scroll down, they'll always be posted uh, through our website and onto our, our uh, YouTube channel. So uh, you, you can watch them if you can't make it on Sunday morning as your church, perhaps, as we have people from all around watching as you get back into the norm uh, of attending your place of fellowship. Uh, we love to have you continue to engage with us, and that's always available. Uh, but prior to that return, uh, at least for a week, probably two, uh, we will have uh, kind of the way we're thinking of uh, some soft openings. Uh, it's going to take a little bit extra manpower. Some of the existing manpower of what it takes to do a Sunday morning is going to be shifted. And uh, we actually have some new equipment uh, that, that we'll be able to use to help uh, improve what we can do digitally in our online presence. So we want to have some time uh, before the we start hitting our maximum atten attendance that we're allowed and people coming in and out. We want to uh, continue to get our feedback under us when it comes to the live streaming. Uh, what we've been able to do uh, most productively over these last few weeks, uh, particularly since we've been quarantining since the Easter times, um, uh, we have been doing some pre-recording and putting some things together. It takes a lot of work, a lot of people involved in that. Uh, but we, we are going to be live streaming as we go back, uh, and we'll continue to do that uh, just from here on out, no matter the circumstance. Uh, so there'll be a chance for you to kind of at least see digitally, and uh, we'll have some of our folks there to help us walk through and uh, learn how to, to navigate both the floor plan and the seating, as well as the worship leadership and the technology that's going to be involved. So be watching for that. We'll give you some further updates. But this week is, again, pre-recorded, and it'll be available uh, first thing Sunday morning and is remain available through the week on that blue button on our website. Uh, and then uh, you can always check it out on our uh, face, uh, excuse me, our YouTube uh, channel, Fairfax Baptists of Virginia. This week, we are doing a couple of unique things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you a little homework. Uh, if you don't mind, just go ahead and, and prepare for the service by reading the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, it's found in Luke. It's in Luke chapter 10. I'm not going to read it for you now, but Luke chapter 10. Begin in verse 25, which is the conversation that Jesus had with a religious leader uh, that led him to tell the story. Now, we've looked at it before, but I want to look at it in light of uh, not only these days, 
COVID and the and what I've said to our Tuesday night crowd, a kind of a COVID and chaos response. What is the church? How do we do uh, respond to to our community? What can how can we be agents of healing? And I want us to look for a few minutes at that story. So go ahead and read that between now and the time you worship with us on Sunday morning. Again, Luke chapter ten, beginning in verse twenty five. And as a part of that, we're going to share the Lord's table again. We're going to have our time of Lord's Supper and communion. One of the things we've tried to do is to distribute uh, a communion packet resource to you. And if you did not get one or you did not get one yet, uh, it may be coming. If you are local and you are a member or, or an attender and we, we have your address and your contact information, uh, we have made overtures. We didn't want to mail it. We've made uh, opportunities, taken opportunities rather to try to drop some things by and provide for you. And, and there's a couple of reasons we've, we've done that. Um, we want to just touch base for one. And I also want to introduce to you one of the limitations, one of the things we're going to have to do uh, when we get back together and we have communion. Uh, there may be certain regulations that certainly begin to uh, uh, lighten up a little bit. Uh, there will be a time where we can have our fellowship hour. There's going to be a time when we can pass the offering plate and even have communion and the Lord's Supper like we normally do. But that first time or two that we get to do it, when we get back, we're going to have to use one of these. I think you can see it here. It's a, a prepackaged uh, uh, wafer as well as the cup. Um, maybe you've used one in a, in a conference somewhere or maybe a congregation to which you belong. We've always uh, either had you come forward and we've had a common cup and from which we've dipped and into which we've dipped or, or we our deacons tirelessly prepare and break the bread and, and prepare the cup for you on Sunday morning. We're not going to be able to do that. Uh, so I wanted to introduce uh, what we're going to have to do and let you do it and learn to, not to be disrespectful, but learn to fumble with this thing. Uh, from your home because it's like opening up the uh, one of those little creamer packets at Denny's uh, there but it's two layers and the first layer contains the bread the second will open up the cup for you uh, and I want you to get a chance to, to learn to do that before you see that when you're back and in your Sunday best and in front of everybody it can be kind of awkward so uh, you should have gotten one of these if you didn't um, or if or for some reason our deacons could not connect with you, it's, it's not for want of trying, uh, but uh, either schedule or connecting uh, with you was not possible. So here's what I want to encourage you to do for those of you who will be worshiping with us but do not receive one or had a chance to get one of these. Uh, just get ready for Sunday morning, just like we've done the last few times. You can use anything from your pantry and uh bring out whatever bread, whatever cup that you might want to use, and be prepared to share the Lord's table together. Uh, and we'll just ask God's blessings on that and that which we've been able to get in your hands, hopefully. Uh, we look forward to being back together again, but and those days are coming quick. Uh, we're doing a lot of work behind the scenes to, to make sure that's done again in a joyful and healthy and safe way. Well, instead of midweek minutes, it's kind of the Friday afternoon minutes, and it is a beautiful day. Uh, you can eat outside at your local restaurants. You can come to the ice cream shop just a few floors below me and sit outside and enjoy uh, June. Can you believe the year is half over? Um, and, which means we got about half as much of this crazy year to go. Um, and it is, it's been good to see some of you. And, and in closing, I, I just want to note uh, that yes, Martha, I did get a haircut, and mom was kind of curious about that too, so finally got a chance to get that done. I hope you're getting out and about and able to do so, and when you are, do so safely, and we can't wait till that opportunity uh, is granted to us to gather again, and it will be soon. Until then, uh, have a great start of the weekend, and we'll see you on Sunday.